I've started running the fascia board. I'm using what we call red cedar that we have here in Arkansas. It's a fairly rot resistant wood. The, the heart of it is real red. It's got a good smell to it. It's aromatic. Some people make cedar chest out of it. Uh, I've been told that this is actually a juniper tree. Now, I won't argue that. I don't know. We just call it cedar here. Can't normally get real long pieces. Uh, cedar trees that we have, they, they taper pretty quickly, and so it's kind of hard to get a real wide board that's very long. So I'm using just shorter pieces. Most of them are about, oh, eight feet uh, or a little over that I was able to get at the sawmill. I did have two pieces to use here on the front that were a little bit longer. I think one was a, a nine or 10 foot and the other one was about 12. So I only had to put one splice in it uh, right here. And uh, I've, I've got it all the way around except for going up this gable end here, which I'm getting ready to do. I'll get that on and I'll be very, very close to having, having it ready to put the metal on. I've got a piece uh, here that I'm gonna put at the peak. I think this is about uh, eight inches square, eight by eight. It was a, a wide piece that I had actually milled out myself several years ago with my Alaskan mill, just had it at the shop. Um, what, I've, what I'm doing, I've chamfered the two edges where the fascia board will, will butt up against this. Um, it's similar to what I did when I built the door for the smokehouse. Uh, I'll do that on a butt joint like that where if it happens to open up, it's not very noticeable. And so I'll set this at the peak, I'll get it nailed on, and I'll run the, the pieces up the sides, or we call it going up the rake of the roof. And uh, I'll hopefully I'll get this finished up before the rain's coming in. I've made my fascia boards uh, six and three eighths of an inch wide, and they're three quarters of an inch thick. I wanted it to uh, be sure and cover up the edge of the decking, so it'll come down over the, the edge of the decking all the way around about three eighths of an inch. So I should be pretty well protected with that. When I do a miter down at the bottom, I like to scribe it to the fascia board that's already there, like on the front side. If this fascia board here is kind of tilted one way or the other, even though it was cut square, I, I cut this one the same way, just cut it square with a frame, just mark it with a framing square or a speed square. I'm not gonna have a fit here. So if this is cocked one way or the other, just a little bit, what I like to do is describe this fascia board on the back side here, I'll just make a little mark at the bottom and one at the top. And then I'll connect those lines and cut that. And most of the time it'll fit pretty good. So I'm gonna take this down now. I've got it, got it marked and cut my miter here and one up at the top where I'll have to splice it. And then I'll be able to put my piece on at the peak and then just butt right against it. I've got my block plane set really light and I'm going to go ahead and chamfer this edge that butts against the piece in the, at the peak. I'm just kind of going from both sides so I don't cause it to break out. This red cedar is kind of brittle, but it's fairly soft until you get around a knot. The knots are kind of hard. Okay, that, uh, that should work. That gives that a little bit of a V look at the peak. Although it's so high up, it's gonna be hard to see, but uh, it's kind of fun to do. It does help in case there's some shrinkage somewhere. 
the V will hide the gap that could open up. Not to say that it will, but there is a possibility that it could. On any wood that you put on the outside, it has a tendency to move with the, with the moisture that's in the air and the weather, the hot and the cold. But this should kind of protect the looks of it. I got it all up and uh, get closer to being able to put the metal on. I've got some flat metal, the color of the roof, that I'll, I'll rip and bend on my brake and I'll let it come down over the top edge of the uh, fascia board. I'll do that all the way around. It'll have a little kick out on it. When I get to that point and start bending that, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'd mentioned that I was going to put uh, a strip of metal up there just over the top edge of the fascia board. And what I've done, I've bent this on my metal brake. It comes down two inches here. And I've got a little bit of a, a bend out at the bottom that is kind of a, a drip edge. If there's ever any moisture that gets up underneath there, it will have a tendency to shed water. And this little drip edge will keep it off the fascia board. And this top edge here is about an inch. And I'll nail that to the top edge of the fascia board. So I've got just a little few more pieces of this to put on. I've got to cut a short piece to finish out to the corner. I've got the biggest part of this already on and I've got just a little short piece. It's actually right underneath the, the ladder there that I've got to put on and then I'll, I'll go on up on top of the roof and it'll take three pieces to get to the peak. Okay, I have all of the metal on, uh, this little drip edge, whatever you want to call it. With this little bend here, it'll shed water. Now, I don't really have to worry much about water getting on this fascia board on, the, on the, the lower side. I did cut my raptor tail square. I did not use a plum cut, and uh, I kind of like the looks of that. The, the fascia board actually is, tilts back against the building, and it doesn't come straight down to uh, catch a lot of moisture and the roof itself the metal will actually come out over this about two inches so i'll have even more of an overhang with that uh, with the metal coming out the sheeting that goes on the roof i am cutting a groove down close to the bottom of the decking between the rafters and i'm covering it with screen wire and this is just a three quarter inch slot and i'm i'm using my router with a three quarter inch dado bit and I'm cutting this groove with it and then I'm covering it with screen and stapling it on with my little air stapler. This will let ventilation come up or air flow up underneath between each rafter. I'm holding my hand over that and I can actually feel air flowing through that but this is how I'm doing it. I've got a little piece right here that I let my router base ride against. And I've got a kind of a bumper block right here. And my router goes against that and across to another one here. And what that is, is just a little thin strip that I just screwed on there. And this edge of the strip, my little stopper strip, lines up with the edge of the rafter. And so I actually set it on this side, the rafters, uh, four or six rafters are under here and uh, I've got another there's a mark probably covered up I can see it just barely but this edge of this strip is lined up with the edge of the rafter so that way when I run my router through there I'll have a slot that is the same distance from either edge of the four by six rafter that's, that you can see underneath and that kind of keeps everything somewhat symmetrical but I'll rig up and, and cut one of these and there's going to be some dust, so you want to watch your eyes. I'm trimming that tar paper because it has a tendency to just kind of frazzle it.
with this screen wire over that slot, it'll keep the mud daubers or dirt daubers from uh, getting up in here and still allow for the airflow. Those slots won't hardly be noticeable once the metal is on the roof. Of course, there's sunshine coming through them now, but when the metal's up, you'll have to look to find them. We're starting to put the metal roof on. I'm using uh, fiberglass insulation bats in between the, the sub rafters here. This is R19, which with uh, the three and a half inch height on the rafters plus the inch and a half on the lathing is about four and a half inches. So it's gonna fluff up in there and fill that void up pretty well. You can see I've got a one run of 30 pound felt. Uh, this will go right underneath the, uh, the metal I've always been under the understanding that tar paper itself is not a true vapor barrier, so I don't have to worry about this actually trapping anything in there. But it is to protect from condensation on the underneath side of the metal, which uh, galvulum or the metal that I'm using will sweat or condensate on the underneath side uh, if the, everything is just so-so. So, -so. so I, I like to run a strip of felt underneath that to collect any moisture that might condense there to keep it off of the insulation and it'll just channel on down and run off and, and drip off. But uh, we're going to get started here, see how much of this we can get on before the sun goes down. Now there's one thing that I wanted to mention on your roof, your insulation or how you do it. You probably would want to check with any building codes that you might be subject to um, where we live. Uh, it's not real stringent and with me using the uh, the fiberglass insulation and then putting tar paper over that underneath the metal to take care of any condensation that the metal might have I can get by with that here but wherever you are you probably would want to check to make sure that you can do what you would want to do and make sure that you're uh, complying with the, the ordinances for the your your area well, we've got the roof on, thank the Lord. Yesterday we had a torrential blowing wind and rain and tornadoes scattered all across the county. If this roof was ever gonna leak, it would have leaked in that rain. And we're in good shape, there's no leaks. Now, I'm through with this scaffold and I'm gonna take it down and set up some scaffold on the gable end so that I could work them out. That's what I will be doing next. I've got some stuff ordered from the sawmill to frame up the gables. And so I'll be doing that and getting them ready to close up. 